in light of Sony bumping their price up to 700 bucks for their PS5 Pro, plus you got to buy the stand, plus you got to buy a disk drive. So you're looking at like 800, a little over 800 with tax. Uh, I'm going to go through this video here uh, of why you might want to build a PC instead of buying a console. Because from this point on, consoles are going to start going skyrocketing. Don't get me wrong. Inflation and economy is, is part of it. But with Sony doing this, it's fixing to set a different bar for consoles, and they're all fixing to try to get their money depending on how the outcome of people buying this. But I'm going to go ahead and bring a friend with me. Uh, I'm going to introduce Sam here in just a minute. Sam's going to take it over from here, and um, he, he's going to explain you know, some parts of the PC and what goes on in the PC, and then he's going to explain what goes in a, uh, in a console, and then, of course, the difference between the two. Thank you, Thomas, for bringing me along today. To the viewer... Don't forget to like and subscribe for honest reviews and tech talk. Here we go. Okay, so a gaming PC is a personal computer specifically designed for playing video games that require high-performance hardware. It is equipped with powerful components to handle the demands of modern games, which often involve complex graphics, fast processing speeds, and smooth multitasking. Here are the key components of a gaming PC. Number one would be the CPU, aka Central Processing Unit, a powerful processor to handle the computational tasks of gaming. High-end CPUs from brands like Intel, Core i7, i9, and AMD Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9 are popular in gaming PCs. The second main part would be the GPU, Graphics Processing Unit, also called a video card or graphics card. The GPU renders the images, animations, and videos. Popular GPUs include NVIDIA's GeForce RTX series and AMD's Radeon series. Next is the RAM, random access memory. Gaming PCs usually have 16 gigabytes or more RAM to support the smooth running of games and multitasking without lag. Now to boot the PC and games faster, you will need a fast hard drive like a SSD's solid state drives or AM.2. They are preferred over traditional HDDs, hard disk drives, because they offer faster load times for games and programs. Some gaming PCs may also have a combination of SSD and HDD. If you plan on downloading a lot of games, you will need 1 to 2 terabytes. Of course, you have a motherboard. The motherboard connects all the components of the gaming PC. You need a good cooling system. Gaming PCs generate a lot of heat, especially during intense gaming sessions, so they often have advanced cooling solutions like fans, liquid cooling, or large heat sinks. You can customize your gaming PC with a case of your choice. There are tons of options. Gaming PCs are built for performance and can be customized for a user's preferences or built by manufacturers like Alienware Asus and MSI. Thank you, Sam, for explaining that to the viewers. Um... As you see, a PC, you can do a lot, lot more than you can with just a console. I mean, you got you can do so much productivity with a PC. Plus, you can customize it. So what? On a PS5, uh, and I, I imagine there's some on Xbox, you can customize your controller. You know, you can change out the colors of certain things on a controller. You can buy different keyboards, different color keyboards, light-up keyboards. There's so many different things. Don't get me wrong. There's some aftermarkets for... Um, controllers for your consoles. There's some LED lights you can put on it if you want RGB, but there's so much more you can do on an actual PC. So again, for the price, and I, I think it was J2 cents. I think he, I, I think it was him. He built a computer. Yeah, it was J. He built a computer since the announcement of the $700 price point. And he built one which was right there on spec with the uh, PS5 Pro. I mean, I did one as well. Uh, it wasn't like Jay's. He actually has the money where he can go buy out on components or was sponsored by Micro Center to do it. But you can build literally a PC that can be equivalent to a PlayStation or even Xbox. And Xbox is fixing to announce their newest one. Uh, I believe they, I don't think they have already, but they're fixing to, um, put out their newest one. But these consoles, because PlayStation just did this, they're fixing to start upping that price. Don't get me wrong. Inflation and the way our economy is right now is another reason why. So 
All right, so we're going to get into it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and give it back to Sam and let him tell you the, you know, the key features and what all it is for a console. So much like a gaming PC, a gaming console is a specialized computer system designed for playing video games. It has similar parts to a PC. We will start with the hardware components. Central Processing Unit, a.k.a. the CPU. Just like a PC, the console's CPU processes instructions from the game software, handling the core operations of the console. It executes game logic, AI behavior, and general system management. Again, we see a graphics processing unit, GPU. The GPU renders graphics, creating the visuals you see on the screen. It handles 3D modeling, textures, lighting, and shading effects to deliver high-quality visuals. And the memory, the console's RAM stores temporary data required by games and applications, ensuring smooth performance and fast access to game assets, such as textures, maps. Then we have the storage, HDD or SSD. This is where game data, operating system files, and downloaded content are stored. SSDs offer faster load times compared to traditional hard drives, Unlike PCs, most games require a physical disks, cartridges, or as digital downloads. When a game is launched, the console reads the data from the media or storage, loads it into RAM, and begins executing the game code through the CPU and GPU. Most consoles only have a frame rate of 60 frames per second and a resolution of 4K. Modern consoles support advanced graphics technologies like ray tracing for realistic lighting effects and high dynamic range HDR for better contrast and color accuracy. Okay, Sam, so let's tell the viewers why they should build a computer instead of buying a console. I sure will. So viewers, the key benefits of a PC over a gaming console would be first, better performance. PCs can be equipped with more powerful hardware, offering higher resolutions, better graphics, and higher frame rates than most consoles. You can customize and you can upgrade individual components such as CPU, GPU, RAM to improve performance over time without needing a completely new system, like with a console. Wider Game Library PCs support more games, including AAA titles, indie games, mods, and older classics across various platforms like Steam or Epic Games. PCs are not just for gaming. They are multi-purpose, allowing you to perform tasks like video editing, work, web browsing, and streaming. Not to mention that PCs offer a wider range of input options like mouse and keyboard, which are preferred for certain game types like shooters or strategy games due to their precision. In short, PCs offer more power, flexibility, and multitasking capability. I hope this helped your viewers. Thank you, Thomas, for having me today. I enjoyed telling your viewers this information. Thank you, Sam, for coming on, you know, to help me with this video today. Uh, again, the a gaming console and a PC are almost identical. By the time you upgrade, to say you went from a PS4 to a PS4 Pro to a PS5, in four years or say you just you didn't upgrade your ps3 to the ps4 until the ps4 pro come out and then you only had it for you know three or four years before you upgraded to the ps5 well you're already looking right there at 800 dollars, and now ps5 is coming out at 700 dollars. and by the time you buy everything the stand and the disc drive you're at 800 bucks anyways and things are just going to start going up these companies are just i, I Xbox is going to join on that bandwagon. I'm really curious to see what the next Nintendo OLED uh, Switch 2 is going to be. I guarantee that thing is going to come out at 450 bucks because it's a handheld and you can take it wherever you want. I mean, Steam Decks, uh, Asus um, handheld, a lot of them, they're already at five, 600 bucks for these handhelds. People are willing to pay $1,000 for this little bitty thing right here. So these companies are like, okay, we want in on that money. And that's basically what's happening. Again, you can build your PC. You can start like today. You can start with a 4060 Ti or a 4070. And when the 50 series comes out, you can wait until all the, the specs come out on them. And if it's going to be a big upgrade. And you can upgrade later or two years down the road when the next gen comes out. Whatever. So, again, me personally, I believe. And I have both. I have a console and I have a PC. But I believe that... PC's worth it over the console. I play more on my PC than I do. My console is for when I'm laying in bed and I just want to relax and play some pressure washing or something at night. 
But anyways, I hope y'all enjoy this. I hope y'all like Sam. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave some comments down below. Tell me your thoughts. I'm Thomas of Tomology. I'll catch y'all on the next one.